I am not a morning person. But on the morning of April 19th, I was up earlier than usual. One of my kids needed an early ride to school, so I did that, came home, made a cup of coffee, and just sat at my dining room table enjoying a precious, rare few minutes of silence before diving into the long to-do list for the day ahead. Then my phone rang. Caller ID said simply, John Muir. Odd, I thought. I wasn't expecting a call from a doctor's office, but something told me to pick it up anyway. It was an emergency room nurse calling to tell me that she was with my 19-year-old son, Joshua, who had been in an accident as he was driving to work that morning. Knowing he had left early for the opening shift, my mind raced immediately to timing. How long? What happened? Where? What? I felt my brain start to spin and the panic was rising, but she put him on the phone because she wanted me to hear his voice so that I would know that he was okay. Mom, I'm okay, he said, though in a voice that was most definitely not okay. She took back the phone and asked me how quickly I could get there. He had been brought in by ambulance and they needed to get him into surgery, ASAP. There was no time for more details than that, but I had heard his voice. I knew he was conscious and alive and in that moment, that was all that mattered. Still, the panic was rising again and I had to squash it down to call TJ out of a meeting he had just begun at work, to stay calm for my other kids, to get to the hospital as quickly as humanly possible. I grabbed my keys and everything else fell away. Nothing mattered but getting to my son. It was all I could do to breathe. Somehow that simple function no longer felt involuntary. Just breathe and hold back the tears so that I could safely drive. I pulled into the hospital parking lot and it was so crowded. I circled for what felt like an eternity, but there was absolutely nowhere to park. That angel nurse was watching for me though. She flagged me down and pointed me to a reserved spot. But by then I'd missed my chance to see Joshua. It was an escalating emergency situation after all. His blood pressure had started dropping and they'd already taken him into the OR to begin the surgery to save his life. She hugged me, gave me a cup of water, and promised me he had the best trauma surgeon possible working on him. I would love to tell you that as I sat exactly where she told me to sit so that the surgeon could find me later, I turned immediately to prayer. And I suppose in a way I did, but I didn't have the words yet. I had too many questions, too much worry, there was too much unknown. So I think in that in-between time of anxious waiting, my prayer was simply, why God? Until my dear friend Tammy appeared and prayed for me. Now I was raised in a faith tradition that believed strongly in scripted and structured prayer. I thought that there was a correct way to pray, meaning from a little hardbound green prayer book with gilded pages. I was taught that we should pray with the words God gave us, prayers crafted from the scriptures, And it wasn't until I was a young adult that I actually understood just how much of the Bible I had practically memorized because I'd been hearing it my whole life, but in the form of supplication and words of praise. How I missed recognizing that those scriptures came directly from the Bible is funny to me now, but that aha moment of making the connection between the Psalter, that instruction manual for prayer, and the Bible was an eye-opener. I still believe the purpose of the Psalms is to teach prayer. They're a treasure of the ancient hymns of God's people. Those traditional roots run deep though, and so prayer doesn't always come naturally to me. I still catch myself looking over my shoulder, waiting for someone to tell me if I'm doing it right. Conversing with God still feels oddly informal to me at times, and I know I'll be exploring that for the rest of my life. So I find great comfort in the words of Psalm 139. Lord, you have seen what is in my heart. You know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know what I'm thinking, even though you're far away. You know when I go out to work and when I come back home. You know exactly how I live. Lord, even before I speak a word, you know all about it. You are all around me, behind me and in front of me. You hold me safe in your hand. I'm amazed at how well you know me. It's more than I can understand. It goes on, but in this psalm, I find assurance that God knows me. He knows me. He sees me. He has a plan for me. But still, sometimes I just want to hide, which I imagine must be like watching a toddler who believes he's invisible simply by covering his eyes. Even then, God's still with me. In fact, God knows me better than I know myself. And this psalm reminds me that God is big enough to accept all of our frustration, anger, and fears when life gets messy and hard. And the words are there to guide me when I don't have my own. But now, as a children's minister, I teach kids this truth, that God is everywhere, and we can talk to him anytime and any way we like, whether it's perfectly scripted words or just whatever tumbles out. It could be a song, moving our bodies, centering in silence. 
I still struggle to find the right words to talk to God some days, but don't worry, this story is on the way to having a happy ending. Though he had major injuries, Joshua's prognosis is good. It feels like there's still a long way to go before he makes a complete recovery, but I know that one day in the not too distant future, he'll be back at work and school and this will all be a memory and God will still be there.